1950s, the CIA wanted to know if you could use hypnosis as a tool aid when interrogating captured enemies. To find out if such a thing were possible, they started their investigation by having an agent do some initial research on the subject. If their research indicated a reasonable possibility to the affirmative, they would then continue their research by performing their own experiments. Although the CIA has a long history of performing inhumane experiments on unsuspecting civilians, I can say it doesn't appear to be the case with hypnosis and interrogation. Just so there's no confusion, there are many reports where the CIA has done research on unbeknownst civilians, such as the case with the Manchurian candidate, which has been popularized in several conspiracy theory circles, among several books and movies by the same name. With the Manchurian candidate, the CIA experimented with psychedelic drugs such as LSD coupled with systematic brainwashing and hypnosis to see if mind control were possible with a focus on getting someone to perform specific tasks, such as assassination, without the subject having any conscious knowledge of having carried out the mission after the fact, thereby creating the perfect scapegoat. This time, they just wanted to know if hypnosis alone could be used as a tool in interrogation to see if they could extract intelligence from a captured enemy they otherwise wouldn't be willing to give up. In September of 1993, the CIA publicly released their findings on the subject, which can be found on their website today. They started their research by asking three questions. 1. Can hypnosis be induced under conditions of interrogation? 2. If so, can the subject be compelled to reveal information? And three, if information can be so obtained, how reliable will it be? In their quest to answer these questions, they answered several others along the way. Now you might be wondering who I am and how I know what I'm talking about. My name is Jonathan Hyde, and I'm a certified hypnotherapist that's been practicing since April of 2010. One of the schools I attended for my training was the Hypnosis Motivation Institute which has been called the Harvard Hypnotherapy Colleges and was the first nationally accredited college of hypnotherapy. All my degrees and credentials can be found on my website at jhhypnosis.com under the About tab. With that out of the way, let's get back to what we are talking about. Hypnosis of Interrogies Their initial research in the first question, Can Hypnosis Be Induced Under Conditions of Interrogation? brought them dismal results. They found that people in the past have already conducted their own experiments in various ways. First, they try to see if subjects would give up information by talking in their sleep. They also found that sometimes a small handful of people would be induced in a state of hypnosis by watching someone else be hypnotized, along with forcing a fake state of hypnosis on a subject using various methods of trickery. Their official final conclusion was the answer to the first question. We are led to the conclusion that the many apparent cases of hypnosis without the subject's awareness or consent all seem to have depended upon a positive relationship between subject and hypnotist. The most favorable situation is one in which the subject expects to derive benefit from his association with a hypnotist and trusts the hypnotist in his ability to help. This would not be the situation in an interrogation wherein the hypnotist is seeking to extract information which the subject wants to withhold. The possibility of using hypnosis would therefore seem to depend on success in the slow process of nurturing a positive relationship with the interrogee or in a perpetrating some kind of trickery. Obedience and Trance Answering their second question, can the subject be compelled to reveal information, would require them to figure out if they could make the subject be obedient while in a state of hypnosis. In previous experiments, results were mixed but still disappointing. While they did find that on one occasion, a lady was forced to carry out a murder in front of several prominent judges, she was unwilling to address completely in front of other people. They later figured out that the reason for those mixed results were because the lady was aware the murder scenario was set up as play acting, while being naked in front of people would be real life. So seeing as they couldn't force obedience while in a state of hypnosis, they tried to see if it could be accomplished post-hypnotically. Here again, the results were disappointing, but this time because they found the experimenters were erroneous in setting up an environment that would convince their subject that it was real life and not play. Their official final conclusion answers their second question, with it is evident that a case like this offers little encouragement to the interrogator hoping to extract secrets by a hypnosis. When the relationship between two individuals is marked by intense feelings, 
and a strong tendency in one to comply with whatever requests are made of him by the other. It is, in fact, hardly necessary to invoke hypnosis to explain the resultant behavior. In the interrogation setting, this emotional relationship of subject to hypnotist is not likely to exist. Accuracy and Veracity In their quest to answer their third question, if information can be so obtained, how reliable will it be? They have to obtain verifiable evidence whether the information would be accurate and truthful. While these may sound like the same thing, they are different because one can be truthful in reciting facts, but may be unaware that it contains certain errors. In their investigation for accuracy, they found that while it appears information given by a subject in hypnosis is true, even if the subject is convinced it's true, sometimes it's proven to be false. This is probably because the brain doesn't have a perfect system in place to recall unimportant or old information. The brain fills in gaps with what it thinks is the most logically accurate information. While seeking veracity or truthfulness in hypnosis, they found that it's already been proven countless times and cases that a subject can lie, refuse to answer, or simply wake up when asked direct questions on sensitive matters. Their official conclusion answers their third and final question. It is therefore possible that information obtained from an interrogee by hypnosis would be either deliberate prevarication or an unintentional confusion of fantasy and reality. The correctness of any information so obtained would thus have to be established by independent criteria. And if they have to or are able to establish correctness of information obtained in hypnosis, then this would make the interrogation process pointless as they can obtain the information direct from the source rather than it being from a middleman. While researching these questions, it's possible one would become paranoid that their enemy might use the same hypnotic tools against them, so they set out to answer two additional questions. Can you hypnotize a subject to be hypnosis proof upon capture by an enemy, or hypnotize them into forgetting sensitive information? Prophylactic Hypnosis Hypnotizing personnel to make them hypnosis proof against enemies as a preventative measure. This would be pointless. Evidence already shows you can't force hypnosis on an unwilling subject. It's better to cognitively warn personnel of an enemy's possible intention of attempting hypnosis to extract information, but not to worry as it won't work anyway. In fact, by hypnotizing someone to make them hypnosis proof would actually have the opposite effect, as hypnotizing someone even once conditions them to enter the hypnotic state faster and easier subsequent times. Hypnoamnesia hypnotizing personnel into forgetting sensitive information upon enemy capture. While it has been demonstrated countless times that hypnoamnesia is possible, particularly in stage hypnosis by making one forget their own name, or the number 7 for example, this wouldn't serve as a beneficial tool in the field. Where on one's timeline of life do you start and stop the amnesia? It's better to rely on individual's own logic to keep information confidential. Hypno-anesthesia Hypnotizing personnel to become oblivious to pain in the possible case of torture by enemy captors. While it has been proven countless times that hypno-anesthesia does work, for example by having surgery performed without the use of an anesthetic, hypnosis for pain suppression is better performed while in a state of hypnosis rather than it be given as a post-hypnotic suggestion. Seeing as relaxation is a requirement for hypnosis, it's doubtful the duress a soldier would be under, such as the situation of torture, would elicit little, if any, relaxation at all. Their final conclusion on prophylactic hypnosis is that the post-hypnotic suppression of all pain might be dangerous to the individual, since pain serves as a physiological warning signal, and it is doubtful that such a blanket suggestion would be effective anyway. It would be better to focus the suggestion on inability to feel pain at the hands of captors. Even this suggestion, however, would rapidly break down if the captured subject felt any pain at all, as is likely in all but a very few instances. The soldier who had been taught to rely on hypnosis as an analgesic and found it ineffective in certain situations might be considerably worse off than if he had not trusted this device in the first place. Pseudo-hypnosis as interrogation aid Seeing as they found that hypnosis is not a suitable candidate as a tool in interrogation, they tried to see if you could trick someone into thinking they're in a highly suggestible state of mind, and thereby give up sensitive information. 
even if you could convincingly force a subject into believing they're hypnotized, it's still doubtful any information given would be correct or even usable. Their final conclusion on pseudo-hypnosis is that an effective defense against this hypnotic situation, as against hypnosis, could be provided by raising the level of sophistication of those who might be exposed to it. Even one or two lectures warning them of possible devices to trick them into believing themselves hypnotized could show them that people cannot be hypnotized against their will and cannot be compelled, even under hypnosis, to tell the truth or to follow suggestions really contrary to their beliefs. Final Conclusion on Hypnosis and Interrogation To sum up all questions posed by the CIA to see if hypnosis and interrogation is a possibility, their official report states, It appears extremely doubtful that trance can be induced into resistant subjects. It may be possible to hypnotize a person without his being aware of it, but this would require a positive relationship between hypnotist and subject not likely to be found in the interrogation setting. Disregarding these difficulties, it is doubtful that prescribed behavior can be induced against the subject's wishes, although we must admit that crucial experiments to resolve this question have not yet been performed. The evidence also indicates that information obtained during hypnosis need not be accurate and may in fact contain untruths despite hypnotic suggestions to the contrary. Hypnosis as a prophylaxis against interrogation, whether to prevent hypnosis by captors, to condition against stress and pain, or to create amnesia for sensitive information, would function as an artificial repressive mechanism with the serious disadvantage of diminishing the captive's mastery of the situation. Finally, the hypnotic situation, rather than hypnosis itself, seems likely to be a more effective instrument in interrogation. The short answer is no. Hypnosis cannot be used as an instrument in interrogation, nor can you force anyone into a state of hypnosis without their consent, or use it as a kind of truth serum. The reason I created this video is for the same reason I'll be creating future videos. To educate the public on a subject few people know anything about, to dispel myths around hypnosis, and to explain what all hypnosis can be used for. So if you want me to make a video explaining the truth about hypnosis in relation to something you saw in the video or online, hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below. If you're interested in being hypnotized by a well-trained and experienced professional, you can find more information on my website at jhhypnosis.com. Till then, I'll see you in the next episode.